Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Fiona Anson. I'm from UTS, and I just wanted to welcome you all to the call tonight. I also wanted to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on, on which we're all meeting from tonight. Um, and um, and uh, for me, that's the uh, Wongal people of the Eora Nation, um, and also pay respects to elders past and present. Uh, we'll just wait a couple of minutes for another, uh, I know we've got a lot of people attending tonight and I think they're still just coming into the session. So if we just wait another minute or so, and then we will get started with our course director, Andrew Stapleton. Andrew, perhaps, do you want to get started now? Hello, hopefully everyone can hear me. All good out there. Excellent. Welcome, everyone. My name's uh, Andrew Stapleton, and I'm the course director for the Graduate Certificate in Business Consulting and Technology Implementation here at UTS. Thanks for joining us today um, to hear more about the Graduate Certificate in Business Consulting and Technology Implementation um, from both us, UTS, and from the organisations who have helped us co-create this course. So joining me today, uh, Ben Davis. Ben is the Senior Partner Technology Manager for Microsoft Australia New Zealand. Maybe Also, I have Anna Heineck. Anna is the Director of Digital and Emerging Technologies at EY. Hello, good evening, everybody. And James Baddams. James is the Group Manager for Australian CRM Talent Community Lead at Avenard. It's great to be here tonight. Good evening. Fabulous. Welcome, Ben, Anna, and James. In this session, we'll be giving you some information about the course, and we'll also talk about career opportunities that it will bring for you. You'll get to hear firsthand from employers who are looking to hire graduates. You'll learn about the types of skills you need and projects you can work on. We'll also talk a little bit about career pathways that you can take once you're in the industry. In the end, or at the end rather, we'll open up to questions for you. Um, and how do you ask those questions? Well, you can see with your webinar controls that you have chat, raise hand and Q&A functions. So if you have any specific questions for our panel to answer, please use the Q&A function rather than the other two. But hopefully I'll be going through and reminding you to put questions in the chat at regular intervals during the presentation. And with that, let me start by giving you a little bit of an overview of the Graduate Certificate in Business Consulting and Technology Implementation. It's a fully online and it's designed for those of you who are keen to gain business, human-centric and technical skills that will help you drive sustainable digital transformation. Our experts in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and also from the UTS Business School have collaborated closely with Microsoft and top tier firms, including Avenard, Capgemini, EY, and KPMG in response to the global talent shortage of skilled consultants. And we have representatives from Microsoft and two of those firms here tonight, Avenard and EY. So why have we co-designed this course? As I've said, there is a significant shortage of business consultants in the industry, and this course has been co-created to equip our students with these skills. So before I give you details about the course itself, I'd like to bring in our panelists who work with organizations who employ functional consultants. So first to Ben from Microsoft. Ben, why is Microsoft partnered with UTS of the design of this course and what are you looking for with this partnership? Sure, thank you, Andrew. Um, so look, Microsoft for a number of years has recognized the need to, to broaden out avenues into technology and careers in technology, um, increasing both 
the number and the diversity of people coming into technology-based careers. Uh, obviously, a couple of years ago, we saw the, the pandemic um, hit and that only just supercharged that for, for a number of reasons. Um, Microsoft recognized UTS as a world-class university and the potential benefits of a partnership being even greater than the sum of its parts. So really it was a win-win. Um, we've worked for the last two years together to help build out this program along with our partners, uh, covering not just the technology aspects, but uh, uh, building on a broader skill set of business-related consulting skills. Um, we feel this prepares the participants in this course for more than just theoretical skills. It actually gives them the ability to apply them in the real world too. Um, and whilst the technology um, uh, the, the technology that makes up the Microsoft Dynamics business applications portfolio is all about the machinery of business. Uh, and this course gives a great uh, overview of that technology. Uh, the course also teaches uh, aspects of how business works, problem solving, creative thinking, communications, collaboration, uh, and the human centric skills needed to understand and create solutions that actually enhance real world businesses. And so why are these skills so important for this career? So. To be a truly effective and successful consultant or architect um, in technology, you need to understand both the domain technical skills uh, for the technology you're working on, as well as the business context in which you're operating. Uh, the best technical solution in the world can be a complete failure if the person designing it didn't understand the why in the first place, uh, and it's not for fit for purpose. So the better that you can actually relate to what your customer or your client is actually trying to achieve as a business outcome, the better you'll be able to help solve that challenge and enhance their business. And Ben, why do you think there's been a shortage of business and technology consultants, consultants rather in the market? Sure, that's, that's a great question. So digital transformation has been a thing for quite some time now, as, as we all know. Um, what we saw a couple of years ago was, as I mentioned before, the pandemic hit. And uh, within a space of months, we saw digital transformation accelerate uh, and more progress being made by uh, a lot of organizations in the space of months that they previously hadn't done in years. Um, that actually led to a huge increase in demand for skilled people um, uh, from both customers and partners uh, in order to help design and build those solutions. Uh, and we're seeing that continue to this day. Obviously, we're, we're sort of past the peak of um, restrictions and all that sort of stuff that we saw during uh, the pandemic. But the demand is still there. Um, you know, uh, customers and partners are still driving digital transformation. Um, in Australia, we we know um, we have a skills shortage. We we continue to have a skills shortage. Um, so uh, what we know, customers are looking for increased productivity um, that uh, digital transformation can bring um, through the use of AI as well. And so what we're seeing is our partner ecosystem. Um, actively looking for new people to bring into that ecosystem, skilling up people that are there uh, to continue to drive those results um, uh, for our customers. Um, I'm well connected into our partner ecosystem and I'm just looking through LinkedIn, I'm seeing uh, new roles popping up pretty much daily on LinkedIn in the Dynamics space uh, even now. Amazing, thanks Ben. We're also very pleased to have two of Microsoft's partner consultancy firms here with us tonight. Let's start with UNR. You've been working with us at UTS to co-design elements of this course so that the students can experience firsthand what it's like to be a functional consultant. Can you tell us a little bit about the role of a functional consultant at EY and are there different specialties that functional consultants have? Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Um, look at why um, our functional consultants are part of a big, broad team of people. Um, one of the things that EY provides is transformation. And a transformation program means there are a lot of different disciplines coming together. Um, we are um, process consultants. We are change management consultants. We are technology consultants and a functional consultant is a very special breed um, that brings together a lot of those elements. Um, at EY, our functional uh, consultants are client facing. Um, uh, and I suppose kind of getting down to the nub of the day to day, um, they're responsible for working with our clients and the, and the users of the system uh, to collect and define requirements they're also responsible for what we call the functional design, 
Um, and the functional design is a really interesting piece. It's quite different than just pure business uh, analysis. It means that a functional consultant comes sometimes equipped with special skill sets or knowledge of an industry. Um, for example, we've got a lot of functional consultants that come to us with supply chain expertise. Um, and that's super important. Sometimes we see functional consultants who come from, uh, say, for example, healthcare, um, and they really understand the needs of service delivery in, in, a, in that kind of complicated environment. They marry that with a deep understanding of the product. Um, and, and those are the Microsoft products. Uh, so both, say, for example, customer engagement, which is the CRM, and uh, finance and operations, which is the ERP solution. A functional consultant will know in depth what comes with that great kit of capabilities out of the box. And they are able to somehow translate, and then I do think them, of them sometimes as a translator and a bridge. Um, their understanding of an industry or business processes for that specific area, that in-depth, back-to-front understanding and in-depth knowledge of the product itself, but also be able to translate that then um, to the technical team. Um, oftentimes, our functional consultants can do a lot of configuration work um, without having to actually customize or um, be a developer and write custom code. And I think that's also a unique aspect that we see um, that sometimes even our clients don't understand um, that a functional consultant can bring. And I think one of the things we see as um, areas where uh, functional consultants really kind of rise and are front and center um, is because they have that translation capability. They have a lot of empathy they're very good listeners often. Um, and so when we talk about how do we look for a good functional consultant to recruit, um, a lot of the skills that come from having worked in other organizations, potentially in different roles, but where listening and empathy and great client management um, have been a focal point, we see that uh, functional consultants who have learned then the product um, married with that previous experience can be really successful. So um, the course has been creative to give students from a wide range of backgrounds the skills needed to become Microsoft Dynamics 365 functional consultants. What type of professional backgrounds do you think are best suited to undertaking the course? And what kind of projects does a functional consultant typically do? Like we see a great diversity of people um, that come into the role of functional consultant. Um, I will say that um, anyone who has had previous experience working in a consulting organization has a little bit of a a, a little bit of a heads up, um, uh, only because consulting organizations do have particular ways of working um, and. You know, a huge amount when we talk about projects, um, it is really important to get onto a project. And, and um, I think that's sometimes different than working in uh, an organization and being a financial consultant as part of a, um, a business. Uh, so people with that consulting background um, pick this up kind of easily. Um, but that's not, that's not necessarily um, a hard requirement. Um, I think We've seen people who've come into functional consulting um, with, I mentioned before, backgrounds in working in a lot of different industries. Anyone who has um, business uh, analytical skills, um, who um, have had to gather requirements and kind of make sense of those, um, but also people who are service design um, oriented, um, who understand the flow of a business process or the flow of a service and can really think about um, uh, how one thing leads to the next. Um, and so engineers, um, uh, not software engineers, but engineers oftentimes um, are really good because there's a, a, a process focus um, and being able to break something that's a complex chain down into more discrete steps. Um, but that also, I, I come from a background that is none of that. 
Um, <laughs> and I've been very successful and very happy working in this. Um, I think there is a, a, a need and a willingness, though, to learn, uh, to be in a growth mindset, um, to, uh, to also continually want to learn. So one of the greatest things about technology and working in digital technology is the rate of new technology. Um, and, and that also goes with the wonderful stack of, of technology that Microsoft has. Um, there is a, a need and a willingness to carve out time, sometimes outside of your day job, um, to learn. And, and there's some great learning platforms um, that Microsoft offers and also some great partnerships that they've, they've developed in order for people to be able to continue to, to upskill and to stay current. Thanks, Anna. Now, over to you, James. Is the role of a functional consultant similar at Avenard? And why is this such a great career? Yes, it, it is similar. And I, I heard Anna talk about empathy and listening, um, translating, uh, being curious and one of the really important things as well she mentioned was having a growth mindset. And I think that's about approaching problems and challenges with optimism and, and leaving that fear behind. Um, at the cutting edge of, of these technologies, you might be the first person in your organization to, you know, to implement a particular solution in a particular way to, you know, to pick up that new feature and to, um, and to apply it. And, um, you know, right now, if you're in, you know, the generative AI space, for example, you're going to be doing a lot of things for the first time. And you need to really approach those problems in a way that sort of says, yes, it's a new problem. Um, how good is this? And and not, oh, I haven't done that before. I'm not too sure. Um, so yeah, look, a functional consultant combines several things. Um, obviously, consulting skills and the ability to have a conversation with your client and in many cases to influence them. Um, a good uh, business analysis skill set. Um, a deep knowledge of the software that you're implementing, a deep love of the software that you're implementing, ideally, um, but but really the ability to synthesize that to bring it together into a solution for your client. Um, you need to be able to get inside the minds of your client and their users to understand the problem, what it, what's really going on, and then to work out how are we going to solve this problem using this software. You then need to explain that to your client, help them build it or build it, um, and, and to implement it and get it going uh, in the real world. And to answer the second part of your question, I think it's a great career uh, for two reasons. Firstly, you get to build things that people use. Um, the systems that we create live on for a long time after we leave. It's deeply satisfying to be able to contribute to them and to see clients uh, transformed by them. Um, secondly, uh, you get a really... Uh, unique perspective on some fascinating problems that completely different organizations are facing. So really diverse problems. So as a functional consultant, you can move across clients and industries, see all sorts of problems up close, uh, many of which right now you may not even know exist. Um, so yeah, you, you get to see diverse businesses quite kind of up close and personal. Um, the perspective that you'll get doing that is, is very unique. And what types of careers uh, do you think the graduates can pursue currently and potentially in the future with all the changes that are occurring with the skills gained from this program? Well, look, you know, those, those ones there on, on, on the slide, um, you, you ideally join a Microsoft partner as a, as a consultant and, and that could lead to all sorts of things. It could lead to a specialization in a particular product or an industry. Um, you know, Anna mentioned the sort of CRM or CE family of products that we have at the moment um, in, in Dynamics 365 and the ERP uh, finance and operations products we have at the moment. Within those areas, there's, um, there's particular specializations that you can pursue, um, but you don't have to. Um, you could uh, do something more technical if you really enjoyed it and you enjoyed the technology. Um, that, that's a, a, a path really that doesn't end. Um, you could eventually pursue a leadership position in one of those organizations. Um, you, uh, depending on the organization you join, um, you, you know, you might look to, to work abroad for a little while. Um, for example, I started uh, with Avenard in the UK. I worked for several years uh, in London in, in finance projects before moving back to Canberra. Um, so yeah, these skills are highly internationally transferable. Um, a multinational partner organization may, may be able to help you with overseas ambitions. 
lastly, I suppose, you, I mean, you could work for an organization directly um, or what we call client side um, and help them more operationally. Um, so yeah, there's lots of roles uh, supporting in life systems and, you know, helping them to manage and evolve. So it's a great deal of opportunity. Fabulous. And I've got a little bit of a cheeky question directed to both uh, you, James and Anna. Am I right to say that both of your organizations, as well as the other Microsoft channel partner organizations, are on the hunt for good consultants at the moment? You would be correct. Um, <laughs> it is a hot market um, uh, for for functional consultants and um, and a really competitive one. Um, for a lot of the reasons that uh, James has mentioned as well, uh, there's a lot of different organizations that um, you can choose to go to. Um, and um, I think the other thing to kind of keep in mind is that um, oftentimes functional consultants are the primary face of um, a program of work um, with the client. So, um, they're they're very trusted, and and the good ones um, are known, and 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 I think that's a really interesting, unique position to be in. Um, we rely on on our functional consultants a lot to carry the weight of the project and to carry the conversations, and and oftentimes we um, we are told by clients, "Hey, we've worked with this person before. Um, we re we really want them back because we formed a really good relationship with them. So, can you go get them, please?" Um, and and so it's a it's a place where there's a lot of personal branding um, as well. Um, but yes, uh, it is. We are on the hunt, and it um, uh, the hunt is the hunt is real. <laughs> <laughs> and look, just to add to that, um, you know, we wouldn't be here tonight if um if we didn't see uh you know a, a benefit in in this course and, and the kinds of people that hopefully will will we'll produce and at Avenard we're always on the lookout for talented consultants to join the team. We do like our functional consultants to be quite hands-on. Um, and we do want to see a real passion for the platform. You know, we may ask a potential new joiner to show us the last power app you made. Um, it's really easy to get started with these tools, tools um, but you do need to be really passionate and curious and interested in staying up to date. So yeah, look, if that sounds like it might be you, then um, perhaps one day we will have a conversation. Excellent. Thanks, uh, James and Anna. And uh, I'll just a bit of a reminder, if there's any questions to please put them in the chat. Um, so just a little bit of a reminder there as well. So uh, now I'd just like to quickly explore what graduates uh, will have learned as part of the graduate certificate program. So as I mentioned uh, earlier, the course is delivered 100% online, which allows you to continue working full-time or to be able to conduct your other activities while studying. You usually focus on one subject at a time and they're typically in seven week blocks, allowing you to manage work and life commitments while gaining the skills you will need for this uh, career. To give you an idea of uh, some of the subjects that are included, um, we have things like stakeholder engagement and storytelling, which aims to give you the knowledge and skill to build connection, trust, and a shared understanding to ensure that you come up with technical solutions that meet business requirements. We've got application implementation with Microsoft Dynamics. Um, and also a partner subject that works uh, at the same time, they're sort of co-requisites, uh, which is business processes. But with application implementation, it introduces you to the suite of products that James was mentioning before, things like Power Apps. So you get, get involved with the Microsoft Power Platform, Microsoft Dynamics 365, um, and you're looking at both ERM and, um, uh, sorry, ERP and CRM. Um, and you're developing apps, automations, business visualizations, those kinds of things. And the thing about, which is really cool about the, um, uh, the platform itself is that you don't actually need um, really any coding skills to create simple yet effective business applications. So that's what's really, really awesome about that. Um, it's co-requisite is business processes where you dig deeper into the analysis and theory behind um, the processes and application of them for both CRM and ERP. And then we have four electives. So you get to choose two out of four electives and there's foundations of business analytics. So that you basically locate, prepare, analyze data. 
Um, and ultimately, it's about presenting results, communicating results to a client, um, or as if it were a client, while also being cognizant of things like ethical issues surrounding data collection, storage, uh, and use of data. Um, accounting practices provides a foundation of accounting, of course, including things like important financial ratios and techniques to improve decision making. And we've got supply chain essentials, um, obviously arms you with an understanding of how supply chains actually operate and to be aware of the issues and techniques to assist companies with their supply chain um, operations. And they're the electives, so you choose two out of those four. And then there's finally our capstone, which is Technology cons Consultation Studio, which brings together basically everything that has come up before. Um, and you, you put it into an applied real-world scenario um, where you're applying the knowledge and skill that you've learned and you come up with a, a clear recommendation um, as a structured, very persuasive narrative as if to a client. Um, and even though the content is fully online, that doesn't mean that you're left on your own. We have live and online scheduled sessions with students and, um, and the subject coordinator where you'll be able to ask questions and you can discuss assignments as well as spaces for you to get together online with other students. You have personalised support from a student support advisor. Um, we have resources at UTS um, and also to help you with sub... Uh, and they can help you with admin resources, subject choices to smooth your way as you go through your graduate certificate. Uh, practical assessments are a really big part of the course so that students can put theory into action. In fact, as I mentioned, you've got the course which ends with that technology studio subject, which gives you the opportunity to basically act in the capacity of a functional consultant, pulling together all that knowledge and skill you've gleaned from the other ones, the other subjects you've completed. So maybe a few more questions uh, for our consultancy panelists. James, and to you, according to Labor Insights, stakeholder engagement, communications, consulting and business processing understanding skills are the most highly requested skills that we have for functional consultants. And so why do you think that is the case? Oh, good question. Um... I think, look, I think it, it sounds pretty diverse, um, but a functional consultant needs to bring those things together. Um, it's really about synthesis. Um, it, it's it's good if you've got business analysis skills. It's it's good if you can, you know, influence a client and, you know, hold a room. Um, it's good if, if you have deep knowledge of a particular technology. Um, but but the functional consultant is the person who pulls all of that together to drive the project towards the outcome. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's why. Fabulous. Might I add to that, just kind of build yeah. on what James has said. Um, I think sometimes those skills that you mentioned are called soft skills. And I think that's a really sometimes an undervaluation of, of those skills. Um, uh, because I think, you know, also, James, you used the word influence. Um, having the ability to really listen, to communicate well, to hold a room, um, all of that is, is the ability to also influence someone. And um, you know, when you're passionate about a product and you're passionate about applying that to a solution, you sometimes you have to influence the people um, around you and the clients as well um, in order to be as passionate as you are and, and to teach them and to learn and help them learn and grow. So um, I think, you know, anyway, we have something called humans at the center, um, which really is a focal point for us. Um, even those that are deep, deep, deep in technology to come back up and to really be able to put ourselves in, a, in someone else's shoes um, as we're talking to them. And that means you have to be, be very actively listening to them as well. And I think um, knowing the technology, like James said, is, you know, it's really important. Um, but you kind of you have to be able to read the room. Um, uh, and you have to be able to, to articulate sometimes some difficult concepts. Um, and so I think those soft skills um, become really critical. Thanks for letting me jump in. Thanks, Anna. And just, um, I suppose, just the last question, and what 
what are the business and tech consultancies looking for in a candidate? You've mentioned some of the skills already. Um, what, what other skills do you think they should possess outside of what they will learn in the course? Well, do you mind, James? I'm, I'll, I'll go and then I'll throw to you. Uh, sure. I've got kind of a short answer. Um, look, I think all of the technology skills and, and the things that you'll learn by taking a course like this are kind of what I call table stakes. Um, what's much, much harder um, is kind of a cultural alignment, um, but probably even more so is empathy and active listening. And in, in a lot of interviews that I conduct, that's what I'm looking for. Because by the time someone comes to me, I know that they've probably passed a test like James talked about, um, and they've come highly recommended, and they've gone through a great course like this. But it's much harder to teach empathy and active listening. James, what were you? Exactly. I mean, yeah, the, the sort of t technology side of it is a ticket to play. Um, the, you know, you do have to get that renewed frequently. Uh, I mean, we, we do see the platform constantly evolving and, and growing and we love tinkerers and experimenters and mad scientists and, and that sort of thing. But yeah, if you're going to go further, um, it, it's about that curiosity, empathy, um, active listening, I think is a critical consulting skill. Um, you need to know, um, when to stop talking, on the other hand, when you do talk, you need the self-assurance to make recommendations around highly impactful solutions. And that comes from the growth mindset that we've discussed. Um, so yeah, I think over and above this, if, if that sounds like you, um, then yeah, I hope, hope you're really excited about what might be a great next step. Yeah, I, and just from a Microsoft perspective, I'd absolutely echo all of those points. I mean, growth mindset, is something at the core of the way that Microsoft operates and all of our partners that we interact with know that. Um, the curiosity that comes along with that, the the, the drive to learn um, and, and, and push yourself in that sense, I suppose, about um, always being curious about new things and things that you don't know and looking at opportunities to learn and grow um, uh, is critical, I, I think, in that because uh, I, I can give you an example that's really relevant to this. I mean, this is, we, we did this um, through the last cohort, uh, and I pulled out my notes for what we had in um, uh, that last one. And I can't remember how that was a year ago, nine months ago, whatever it was. Even in that time, the amount of growth in um, what we've done from a technology perspective uh, at Microsoft, um, that adaptability and the agility to, to continue to want to learn about it. Um, when we talk about uh, AI is, is everything these days. And, and when we, we did this last time, it was sort of, coming up, but it was certainly wasn't uh, like it was now. So um, just, you know, that curiosity, that drive to, to stay, um, uh, you know, to, to stay, uh, I guess, relevant with your skills and knowledge um, is sort of critical there for success, I think. Um, so um, yeah, that, that that's probably what I'd add to that. Fabulous. Thanks, Ben. So thanks so much uh, for sharing your insights with our audience team. Um, I think we might just open up the floor now for questions. Um, so. Yep, I've got a whole, whole bunch of them here, Andrew, that Cast and I have been frantically. Oh, answering. fabulous. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll start right back at the top. I think some of them we have answered, so we probably don't need to deal with, but it would be good to get perspective from Anna and James on a couple of them. Um, the first one is, is this role very similar to a solutions engineer? So Anna or James or Ben, do you want to uh, tackle that question? I'd say it is different. Um, and there's a couple of things that um, certainly are in common. Um, so a solutions engineer would need to know the product really, really well um, and would need to understand how it's um, architected and the data model. And um, But a solutions engineer might take up when there's a need to change that base code, for example, to meet a requirement, um, which is also super important. But a functional consultant does what we call configure. And when we talked earlier about not needing to have coding skills, um, 
I think it was probably with me. You don't have to have coding skills to be a functional consultant because you're taking the functionality that is already there that you know really well and and you're able to configure it without having to change the code. And that that is a really special art. Um, and and that I think is a big difference. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I mean, you, you want to do that gap fit well, it, with your knowledge of the software and what it can do and how it ought to be used. You need to sort of explain and show the client how to solve their problem in that way. I would say a solutions engineer or perhaps a, a software developer or something like that is when we've kind of run out of road with, with the product. It can't do that particularly kind of boutique or unique thing. Um, and we need to open up Visual Studio and start writing some code. Um, that's when you stop being a functional consultant and, and you start being maybe a solution engineer or something else. Awesome. Thank you very much for those answers. Um, okay, let me see. Here's another one. Do you think a salesperson who works in a tech company um, and would like to explore more about how technology backends work would be suitable for this kind of career and this course? Absolutely. Okay, short and sweet. <laughs> yeah, in all seriousness, I think it's that it's that curiosity. Look, it, um, that's perhaps too short. Um, salespeople understand how their customers work in order to be able to sell to them. Um, you have to understand business. And what we're talking about with business applications is understanding how businesses work. Um, there's obviously the technology aspect of it. Um, but yes, absolutely, a sales background would have some very, very valuable knowledge, experience, insight um, that would help you become very effective in a role like this. Uh, we've got another question here about, do you expect skills like SQL to be re- required in functional consulting? No, not really. I mean, I've... Um... I think I did SQL at uni a long time ago and I can remember a little bit about it. What you you will want to know is, is it just a little bit about modeling data that might be helpful. Um, and that comes from a lot of, um, you know, courses that touch on SQL around relational databases, but you don't have to be an SQL expert. And as a functional consultant, I'd be stunned if, if you ever wrote a line of SQL. Mm-hmm. And a similar question kind of following on, somebody has asked, uh, would you ever use business process modeling notation, user stories, or even do UAT? So write test scripts and testing in this role. We do get our functional consultants to go across a lot of um, testing. So in a lot of ways, we we also, especially with our lead uh, functional consultants, we, we often say that they are the keeper of the quality of the solution. Um, so we do want them to be um, uh, potentially writing test scripts that they do. Um, uh, they'd certainly be involved in the way we work. Um, we often work for a client um, who often is the one leading a user exceptions testing cycle. Um, so there would be a need for a functional consultant in that space to be able to help articulate and explain um, why the system is is working as expected um, uh, during that period. Uh, business process modeling, um, not really. Um, I, I haven't seen that to date, but I'd be keen for James and, and Ben to kind of lean in on that one. It wouldn't hurt in any kind of a way. Um, uh, but I think one of the things that comes with uh, an understanding of both the CRM and the ERP and other parts of the the Microsoft business application stack um, is that it has inbuilt business processes, some really good ones. And the the ask of the functional consultant is to really understand the business processes that are built in to the native functionality and to be able to leverage those um, to to help solve a client's problem. Mm, Yeah, I I would agree completely. I mean, we know that you know, business process modeling and BPMN and all that sort of, those are sort of fairly, um, I suppose, purist business analysis approaches that, um, that, you know, people can take. Um, We don't really use them necessarily day to day. Um, We're definitely, you know, on the course of a project, you're going to sort of draw a few flow charts, um, explain a few concepts and, and that sort of thing. Um, but it's probably going to be um, less formal 
um, I think those those sort of classical business analysis methods and tools can be a, a little bit dry, but they do have their place, mm. um, particularly in in you know um, you know massively scalable and repeatable processes, and you know sometimes that discipline is is really important, and and sometimes it's more about knowing the the process that comes with the system that you're implementing. Awesome. Um, we've got another question here. Um, I'm curious about a typical workflow or methodology that a functional consultant follows during a typical project. Well, at, at Avenard, we have um, the Avenard delivery framework, which is a, a sort of, I imagine most consulting organizations are going to have something similar, um, which is, is sort of a a really broad think of it like a wikipedia on how do i do my project um it's got uh all all of the the stages that happen in a project the, the particular tasks that you might need to complete at particular times and the resources and um you know templates and, and so on that you're going to need to sort of call upon um as well as um guidance as, as well that you can access and, and links to our our training library so i mean that that's a huge topic um, in in, it, in itself. Um, I, I we we're regularly training people inside our organisation on updates to our methodology and how it works, and you know key changes to it and why we've done them. Um, but yes, there, there is a there is a methodology there that we follow. Yeah, and I'll just I'll echo that, and I think Microsoft is um, a, like a, a couple of different methodologies. One one used to be called Microsoft SureStep, um, which also introduced, and I think this is really important for this group of people. This would be something that you would be trained in. Um, all all of our organizations would invest and um, and curate a continuous learning um, around the different delivery methods. Um, they are frameworks. And as James said, I've had days worth of conversations with, with people about this aspect and philosophical debates and agile versus waterfall. But the, the fact is that we all have rigor in the way that we deliver. And one of the things that's really important for you all to know is that we would train you in that. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just echo from a Microsoft perspective. I, I come from the part of Microsoft that uh, works with our partners, which is <clears throat> why I'm here this evening. Um, my entire team is all about partner enablement. So we will I will put all of my um, partner solution architects, as they're known, will be out there working with our partners, helping enable skill, uh, helping them with their solutions, uh, providing a conduit back into Microsoft for engineering information, um, as well as um, the sales and, and go-to-market aspects of things. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. We, we are, from a Microsoft perspective, we are very invested in the success of our partners and the people that are in those partners. Thanks, Ben. Um couple of more questions. One is, um, what are the chances of a new graduate getting placed as most, and do most of the companies require extensive experience? We, uh, we have a, a graduate program as well as a, um, I suppose, cross-skilling initiatives that bring people in from, from other career pathways. Um, so yeah, I mean, our graduate program is an annual um, intake. Um, and yes, we, we do take people in at the graduate level. Similarly. And, and I think it's a um, an important concept to note that you can be a graduate at any age, um, uh, but the graduate program is a structured program uh, that thinks about uh, a series of engagements and a series of learnings uh, designed to support someone coming into a new career. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Um, and then uh, there's a whole bunch of questions in here from people that are saying, I've got this background, I've got that background, I've got a background in construction or electrical engineering or business and marketing, you know, would this be suitable for me? And it'd be just, and I know you've probably already said it'd be great just to extrapolate on, you know, the, the kinds of backgrounds, the mixes of backgrounds that functional consultants come from and why having that variety of backgrounds is really important. Yep, I'll jump in and, and I'm sure that James and Ben will, um, will echo and, and add, but uh, we do see what, what I love about consulting, maybe I'll take it from that perspective, is that I have worked for so many different kinds of clients in so many different kinds of businesses. 
And, and what that means, and I think we've talked about growth mindset, we've talked about the need for active listening, but it also means that, you know, there's a variety of backgrounds um, that can really lend themselves to this kind of level of inquiry and this kind of level of problem solving. So I'm, you know, I see an electrical engineer, um, I see construction, um, uh, I think there's been quite a few other people too, uh, not for profit. All of those organizations um, that you've been working for, they're they're all of our clients, um, and and there is also a footprint, you know. For there's a lot of not for profits, um, and so that knowledge will lend itself really well uh, coming into any consulting organization. Um, but you also, I think I'd encourage all of you to think about it from the conversation that we're having around those soft skills and the lateral skills as well. Um, so having having expertise in one area is, is fantastic and, and that certainly will be leveraged. Um, but I also really encourage you through considering this program and, and, and thinking about your next steps in your career to, to also think about um, your transferable soft skills. Because I think what's happening, um, and we're talking about it, you know, as Gen AI and um, the technology skills or the hard skills will continue to evolve, and they're going to evolve a lot more rapidly as well. Um, so we're all going to have to be continuously reskilling. But the soft skills, they won't change as a as a high demand, high critical, high um, high indicator of success. Um, on a on a program or a project. Um, so to all of you who are wondering if your exact skill sets um, are a good match, the answer is yes. Um, but I encourage you when you're when you're looking at um, interviewing or even thinking about the way you want to define your career to to not only think about those hard skills, but to really think about uh, the skills that we were talking about, about listening, about active uh, active listening, empathy, growth mindset, adaptability, agility. Yeah, that's, I, I would agree with all of that, Anna. And I suppose um, my perspective on on backgrounds is um, for, for anybody asking from a particular uh, professional background or a track that they've been on so far, I would say, I'm sure every day in, in roles like that, at some point you're sitting down to use some sort of system or other or multiple systems um, to, to make that business work. Um, that's experience in how that business works, how that industry works. Um, you probably had a lot of ideas about how it could work better as well if you've got some old antiquated systems or something like that there. That's all insight that's really valuable to technology companies um, because uh, technology companies can't just sell the technology. Customers want to know that technology companies understand their business. Um, that's why Microsoft doesn't sell directly to every single customer in the world. We rely on partners um, to go out there and make it real for customers. So if you bring that valuable knowledge from a particular industry uh, along with you and learn the tech skills to sort of supplement that that actually is quite a valuable proposition from a career perspective and and you can have experience in things that business applications do if you're stacking shelves at Woolworths or driving a truck you're part of a supply chain you actually have some understanding of supply chain management whether you call it that and realize it or not um, and that's valuable right so I would say no matter what your background is it's valuable um, supplementing with those technology skills is, is really that amplifier in terms of um, uh, career Mm. And last, last question for the night, because I think we're getting close on time. What kinds of things would you recommend an aspiring functional consultant do to build their profile and connect with potential employers and partners while they're studying? Um, to start with, I'd, I'd probably uh, look at some of the fundamentals courses on Microsoft Learn. Um, you can start to get familiar with some of these um, these pieces of software um, and, and complete some of the learning paths. Um, if you really wanted to tinker, you could take out a trial and start playing with it yourself. Um, you could look at completing something like app in a day or um, dashboard in a day and and just you know actually getting hands on and, and using them and seeing if you if you like that. Um, and uh, you know if you can make something kind of that that helps you. Um, uh, Someone who works in in my team is a keen scuba diver, and and he made a a little power app. Um, it took him just an afternoon, but 
was um, about helping him uh, work out how much oxygen he needed to put in his tank. I thought that was a little bit a little bit critical, um, but you know he went and did that anyway, and that was useful for him, right? Um, so yeah, maybe you've got a little a little problem like that that you uh, you could find a tool for and, and solve it, and um, and in doing that, you're kind of um, being a bit of a consultant as well. In terms of the network side of it, um, LinkedIn's a great place. There's lots going on there with you know the user groups um, in, in particular. Um, lots of lively discussion there around um, you know problems that others are facing and you know how they solve them. Um, there's lots of wonderful um, Microsoft MVPs um, who will will blog um, in great detail on you know upcoming features, new, newly released features, how they're useful and how to implement them um, and are really, really open and supportive with their time um, on, on online forums and in, in helping the community. Um, so yeah, probably probably start with LinkedIn would be my answer. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And not just because it's a, a Microsoft um, thing, LinkedIn is actually, I mean, the world's biggest professional network by a long shot. And the, the community groups are fantastic there. Uh, one thing I would say, it would depend on your location as well. Some of those groups actually have in-person get-togethers uh, as well. So uh, if you can join those, <clears throat> fantastic way to network, um, even if you're in the studying stage and not ready to step into the role yet. Um, they're always really receptive to new people coming along. Um, so yeah, just, just dive in. Yeah, and I just want to add to that that you'll also get exposure to some of the Microsoft partners through the course. Mm. Uh, so there are there are and not all of the Microsoft partners that have been involved in co-developing the course are featured throughout the course. And then we have live events throughout the course as well, where you can get to meet some of the partners. So you def you have those opportunities too. Uh, that's it for questions, Andrew. Okay, thanks, Fiona. Um, so once again, thanks for the. Uh, the amazing insights that uh, the team has given us tonight. That's fabulous. And thank you very much for all the participants for their uh, questions. Um, I just thought I'd wrap up a little bit. Uh, if you have any further questions, you're most welcome to contact uh, a student enrollment advisor. So we've got a phone number there. There's also an email address and a very long link that you're able to do, or if you want to take the shortcut, just use the QR code. So that's available to, uh, to it there. So you can reach out to us or any of those through the details that we've got on the screen, or just, as I mentioned, just use the QR code or the link. Um, I think we may have it in the chat box as well. Uh, applications for our October intake are coming up. So they're on the, uh, on, they close on October 16, if you're interested. So uh, make sure that you apply soon in order to uh, secure your spot. And again, just like to thank Ben from Microsoft, Anna from EY and James from Avenard for generally give us, giving us uh, their time tonight. And for those of you on this webinar who decide to enroll in the course, We'll probably be seeing a lot more of these people uh, throughout your studies and maybe even working with one of them in the future. Thanks again for your time and hopefully it won't be too long before we see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.